In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you three of my tips to help you reclaim your menopause, to get rid of the overwhelm. So welcome to Menopause Mondays. I find one of the biggest sticking points for most ladies and most midlifers, most menopausal ladies that I talk to is the fact that there is so much advice out there and some of it is conflicting and some of it's just downright confusing. So I wanted to sort of ease, give you an easy approach that's going to take the pressure off that. I think with the, so much, you know, you, you, you might Google and it's just like, well, do I do this? Do I eat that? Should I cut out that food group? Should I be doing this, that, the other? And, and, Actually, you, although you have a desire to improve where you're at right now, it is just so darned overwhelming. So my my episode today is to sort of strip back the all the layers of the varieties that are available to you and just give you my three top tips to help you approach getting healthier and fitter in a more holistic way. Um, I'm a qualified psychotherapist, qualified hypnotherapist. I run online health and fitness groups. Um, I've been in the health and wellness industry for a decade and a half or so now. And um, this is sort of going to be the culmination of all those sort of things that people struggle with um, just to get started. So firstly, I ask you, what do you actually want to achieve for yourself? I think most of us, certainly most of the ladies that I talk to in, in going through sort of perimenopause and menopause and beyond, it's weight loss that they want. Um, I think weight management is, um, is an important factor. We don't want to put on too much weight because of the various health risks associated with that. Um, but I, I think when you, when you adopt a holistically healthy lifestyle, so you, you're doing things that just slot into your lifestyle easily, you'll find that weight loss will become a positive byproduct of that. You may actually need to gain weight. I know I do talk to some people who need to gain weight. Um, I wish I were one of those as well. But, um, you know, th that is also something that we deal with. And I, and I think weight management per se, people, I think all of us think, oh God, it's going to be, it's either going to involve deprivation or it's going to involve like a sort of a dogmatic plan that I've got to follow to the T otherwise it, it all goes you know pear-shaped and and it's not it's about feeding our bodies with fuel using food as fuel and also enjoying treats I love my Prosecco I love wine I love beer I love whiskey I love I love food I love dark chocolate I'm not the type of person who could live a healthy lifestyle with restriction it just would not interest me at all um I keep myself active. I do have a, quite a lot of energy, but I think that's due to the lifestyle that I lead. I think my, again, my energy is more as a result of the things that I'm doing, not that because I was suddenly born with energetic genes. I, I think, you know, it's very easy to, to sort of cast yourself off as, oh, I've not got the greatest genes. And because this happened in my family, it's going to happen to me. Yes, some things are genetic, but our environment and how we respond to our environment has such a strong impact on how we take our lives forward. So what going back to my first point is, what do you want? Do you want to just feel more energized? Do you want to feel more vibrant? Do you just want to wake up thinking, yes, I've got this. I, I feel like I'm in control of my life and not that my life is in control of me. That's certainly what I wanted when I started, you know, really paying attention to I suppose what I'm the baby steps that I take on a daily basis and when you know what it is that you specifically want you will it, it's like seeing it as a positive weight so say we talk about weight loss for instance um and I don't really like that word I think weight management is much healthier in this day and age but just being very sort of blunt using this as a very blunt tool weight loss you think of restriction and deprivation nobody's going to continue that long term even if you hit your ideal weight and you feel amazing and you just look great and yay, you just, because it's depriving you and you're and it's some kind of resistance that the body wants to, us to be comfortable. The brain is designed in such a way that it keeps us stuck in what we feel comfortable with because it wants us. It the, the brain actually encourages us to be lazy because ultimately we want to be to survive. You know when before we started living these crazy busy lives our brain is is device created for us to survive and so to survive we want to conserve energy and that sort of backfired on us now because we all live or many of us live such sedentary lives 
that, 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 that brain's response to want us to preserve energy and then the sedentary life on top of that is not having a positive effect. So we want, we, there are certain things that we need to, act, need to do to actually energize ourselves. And we can do that through sort of the healthy steps that I'm going to put, sort of suggest to you that you do today. And that takes me on to my, um, my second point is whatever you choose to do today to help you reach your end goal, or th th that feeling of energy, that feeling of vibrancy, know that you can do it. I've done it. Hundreds of ladies and, and some men that I work with have done it as well. It is, you're, you're not the odd one out, I absolutely promise you, but it's to take it with baby steps. Rather than seeing the entirety of a healthy person's lifestyle, just commit to doing one thing this week. And then when you've got that down, you commit to adding something else to that. And you'll find that you'll just gradually continue to build on that. And then the things that you were thinking about and really having to focus on this week, they'll just become a part of your healthy habits. They'll become, become part of your healthy routine and you'll do them without even thinking. That's where we can use the brain to our advantage because it wants to conserve energy. We're really good at making habits, but some of those habits can be bad habits and some of them can be beneficial habits. So we wanna be creating the beneficial habits. And just incidentally, if you're, if you're struggling, you know, if, if you like, if, I love reading and I, I like to understand how things work why we respond in such a way if you need a little bit of sort of personal development in the background I would read something like uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear I think it is um, the compound effect that's also business related but also healthy lifestyle related um, that's all about daily small consistent actions building up to long-term benefit um, and another one is the slight edge uh, Jeff Olson the compound effect is off the top of my head, possibly Darren Hardy. Don't hold me to that. I can't actually quite remember. I think it's Darren Hardy. But those are three great books. If you're looking to just have other people's opinions and stories on creating a healthy foundation that you can build on gradually and just the the importance of those those small baby steps that you're going to start to add to your to your lifestyle, how they increment to enormous positive results in the future. And also know that it's not going to be an overnight success story. The success story is wrong. It's not going to be an overnight change. The success story is the minute you commit to saying yes. And if you're thinking about change, just do it. The perfect time will never, never come. Perfect timing just doesn't exist. The perfect time is right now. If you're listening to this, wanting to make changes, commit to doing one of the things I might suggest today in this, in this video. They're really easy. So for instance, you might need to drink more water. Water is great for our clarity. You know, if you're struggling with brain fog, up your water. If you're getting hot flushes or hot flashes, drink more water. To People say, yo, you need to drink six or eight glasses of water a day, but how big is a glass? And how, how, you know, what kind of a person are you? How big are you? Do you live in a hot or a cold climate? The, the best way to work it out is to weigh yourself in pounds. You di di divide that by two. And the answer is the amount of fluid ounces of water you should be drinking as a minimum every day. So if you weigh 200 pounds, divide that by two, you ought to be drinking 100 fluid ounces of water every day. If you live in a hot, cold climate or you're very active or you're getting a lot of sweaty, episodes through the menopause drink more water it's going to help you lose weight if you need to lose weight it's going to detoxify your body a body that is toxic cannot lose weight it will hang on to fat to protect it is another of those inbuilt built survival instincts so you need to detoxify and by doing by drinking more water you're going to help the body to detoxify and so that's why you will help to lose weight it also fills you up for longer you know there are quite there are quite a few times when i think oh i'm hungry and I know I've eaten not long ago. So I literally, I, I run downstairs, I pour a pint of warm water. Warm water is better for your metabolism than cold water is less of a shock on the inside once it goes down. And, and I, just, I just wolf a pint of warm water. And that very often gets rid of what I thought was a hunger craving. Because we know that we've eaten not long ago. And if we're eating food as fuel, so it's not just like rubbish processed food, which might have you feeling hungry again soon because it doesn't have much nutritional value. If you're eating well, really you shouldn't be hungry in between meals. 
Um, if you are feeling hungry, this brings me on to my next point is, um, have, if, if you're feeling hungry and you want a snack, rather than reaching for like the crisps or a biscuit or a cookie or sweets or anything that you know is not healthy food, have fruit. We really should be eating more fruit in our diet, aim for things like berries, um, dates. Dates are excellent. They also contain very high amounts of fiber, but also boron. And boron is like, it's a trace mineral, but it's incredibly beneficial for us, particularly as we go through the menopause, because it helps to um, boost our sex hormones. So particularly testosterone and estrogen. If you like dates, stock up on some Degle Noor or whichever dates you like, Degle Noor are my favorites and just have two or three of those as a, as a healthy gooey snack in the afternoon. Yes, it's dried fruit and yes, dried fruit is quite high in sugar, but it's, it's about eating something that it might be reasonably high in sugar, but compare that to like a biscuit or a cookie, you know, boron's natural, sorry, the date is natural. It's got boron, it's got fiber, it's got magnesium, it's got loads of other things that are beneficial for you. The cookie's just a load of rubbish. So fill up on something that's actually going to give you some nutritional value. Apples are high in boron. Um, avocado is high in boron. Milk is high in boron. So, um, you know, there are other ways of getting it. But dates, I think, are an, uh, dates and apples are an excellent snack. So if you do get the sort of the, uh, the, the munchies, go for fruit rather than um, uh, rather than, you know, a sweet alternative, processed food alternative. And then veggies. Um, again, veggies are very high in fiber and various phytonutrients, antioxidants. They're really good for our gut health. You've probably heard of healthy bacteria. Well, the the fiber in our in the veggies and the fruit that we eat is the prebiotic. So it actually feeds the healthy bacteria in our gut. There are so many studies linking now the um, importance of our gut health to our mental health. So if you're fee you know, if you've got low mood, if you're feeling sluggish, if you're feeling crabby, if you're feeling anxious, focus on your gut health. It will help improve your mental health. It will also help you sleep better. It will help you keep things moving. It will help avoid a constipation. Combine veggies and water. If you're constipated, just up your water and up the amount of vegetables that you're eating. Now, vegetables, I recommend people have try when you're eating a meal with vegetables, have half of your plate full of veggies. If you can have vegetables two to three times a day, I achieve that by having if I sometimes I have oats in the morning for my breakfast, but other times it will be like a giant mushroom with some spinach and some onion, red onion and maybe garlic and chili because I love chili. And green beans. I absolutely adore green beans. I keep them in, I keep them frozen. They're quick and easy to prepare. And I, that's what I will have as a breakfast sometimes. And sometimes I'll grate over some Parmesan cheese as well and balsamic vinegar. It is delicious, but that helps me get those, those veggies in. And it also keeps me fuller for longer. Oh, and cherry tomatoes I stick on top as well. And then in the afternoon, I normally have my smoothie, my superfood shake. I often blend frozen cauliflower into that just to make sure that I'm eating, you know, I'm getting vegetables mid afternoon. And then in my evening meal, I always have loads of vegetables or big bowl of salad, something, you know, with lots of colors, beetroot, um, tomatoes, avocado, either uh, cabalo nero or broccoli or green beans or salad leaves, something along those lines. So I think for the majority of us, if we can up the amount of vegetables that we're eating, all the better. And if you boil your vegetables, try and opt for steaming or literally just blanch them. So boil them for a few minutes and then eat them as crunchy as you're able to, to manage. Cruciferous vegetables, so broccoli, collards, things that, like that, sprouts, Brussels sprouts, are very good um, in during the menopause. They, they're very, very beneficial for us without going into the science of that. But um, yeah, anything green or vegetable based, if you can eat more of it, it's gonna be beneficial for you. Um, caffeine also is relatively high in boron, just off the top of my head. A, a quick side note on caffeine. I've noticed that since I've cut out caffeine from my diet, the joint pain that I used to get from my, I'm sure it's menopause related joint pain has gone, pretty much vanished. I used to get out of bed and walk like the tin man before he'd been oiled. Now I get out and I look like the tin man after he's been oiled. So um, if you're struggling with joint pain, just give it a try. I cut out caffeine randomly because I ran out of the coffee that I drink for about three days and I noticed 
the biggest difference in the morning. So if, if, ca if joint pain is an issue for you, try cutting out caffeine. It makes the biggest, biggest difference. Um, so we talked about nutrition, adding more veggies. We've talked about water. I also want to just say that sleep is incredibly important for us. Even if one of your baby steps is just to commit to getting to bed earlier and turning off your screens earlier, I don't know about you, screens make the biggest difference to how well I go to sleep. If I'm working, working on the laptop, it's a nightmare. If I've got my phone and I'm reading on my Kindle, it doesn't affect me as badly. But if I'm reading a book, I, I will go out like that. So uh, same with television, you know, try, try and turn it off 30 minutes before you go, you're aiming to go to sleep and maybe read a book or listen to nice music or listen to a podcast or listen to an audio book. Um, yeah, you, once you've got your sleep under control, you will find you'll have more energy. It's beneficial for our hunger hormones. It's beneficial for our sex hormones. It's beneficial for how our brain recovers, how, how the entire body recovers. It also, good sleep turns white fat into brown fat. White fat doesn't burn calories. Brown fat does. So the, the more you can prioritize your sleep, the the better the you're just creating a really strong foundation for your healthy living so that could be one of your baby steps this week is just to make sure you're getting to sleep getting to bed a bit earlier i know it's always tempting you know you you get to bedtime and think oh no oh i just finished this film off or just finished that series commit commit to how you want to feel commit to wanting to feel energized and vibrant promise you those like the compound effect if, if you add up all those extra half hours of sleep, you're going to allow yourself to get by the end of a week, at the end of a month, the end of the year, how much more sleep are you going to have given yourself? Uh, the, there's also quite a few studies pointed to dementia and Alzheimer's and lack of sleep. So bear that in mind. And then finally, um, make sure that you are moving. Now, you might not want to move like I move, and that's absolutely fine. Find something that you can commit to. If you don't like the gym, if you don't want to work out at home, walk. Walking is really, really good for us. It'll help strengthen your bones. It'll help tone up your muscles. Ideally, you'll be outside, so you'll be in nature, which is incredibly beneficial for our mental health. You'll get the vitamin D from the, the, from the sunlight or the cloudy sunlight. Walking at a pace that is going to get your heart elevated a little so you're feeling a little bit out of breath is what you want to aim for and ideally 30 minutes a day if that's all you can do that is going to be a massive improvement and you'll find that the more often you do it it's going to, you're, you're you're going to get to the end of your walk and think oh, i'm so pleased i did that because it I, I promise you it, it makes you feel so much happier but you're also going to get stronger and that will lead to other things you might get to the stage where you're walking for half an hour and you think Actually, I think I might just combine a little bit of a jog or maybe I'll just do 10 minutes of HIIT training before I do a walk or after a walk. It will all have a beneficial impact on you. So it might be that today you commit to going out for 30 minute walk, brisk walk, and that is what you're going to be as your first baby step to getting better. My third tip is keeping yourself accountable. The things I've shared today are all what the what most of the ladies in my wellness group struggle with. Accountability is going to help you keep going when you're feeling a lack of motivation or you're you may be recovering from an illness or when you're just feeling low. There are days when, you know, I, I people say to me, oh, how come you're always so energetic and happy? And the majority of the time I am, but I do have my moments where I just think, in fact, I had one today. I, I, I felt emotional today. I felt tired. I felt a bit kind of like, almost as though I'm trying to fight something off like a germ. And um, and I just acknowledged how I was feeling. And I, did, I didn't do a heavy duty workout today. I did a 45 minute full body, um, kind of workout thing it was lovely it was stretching it was strength training I felt way better after it and I will after I've done this I'm going to take my dogs out for a walk so I really feel like I need just to connect with nature because I'm just feeling more sensitive today so I'm not always on 100% but by 
having these tools in my toolbox, these healthy baby steps that I've incorporated gradually over time, I know that there are things that I can do that are going to help elevate me. So it's not going to be my best day to day, but it's going to be a lot better than it could otherwise be. And I think it's really important that we we allow ourselves that space. But just bringing this back to accountability, I know at the end of today, I'm going to be checking into my online health and fitness group saying, oh, I didn't feel the best today, but I did it and I did my workout and I felt so much better afterwards. And, um, you know, and we, we sort of rate ourselves with how much, how, how good our nutrition was, how much water we managed to drink, um, you know, those sorts of things, how we're feeling and just having a community or even a fr friend or a family member that you share your goals with is incredibly powerful because knowing that somebody's waiting for you to say show up and say yeah I did it or oh yeah I did it it makes the biggest difference so accountability is absolutely massive so whether you have a significant other that you want to say right today's the day I'm taking my first baby step by the way do you want to do it with me? Because it's so much easier if you've got somebody that does it with you. I know people who've like given up smoking and they've committed to do it together. And so when one of them's feeling weak or they're both feeling weak and they're really getting that craving, they can support each other and, and help them to you know come up with reasons why they don't, they're not going to take that cigarette. And if you are going to find an accountability partner, I highly recommend you explain to them your number one, why are you doing this? What, what is your goal to achieve because then they can support you in your journey and on those days when you're not really feeling it they can be there to help just support you and make sure that you're you know you're hitting those markers that you want to hit remember that none of us is perfect um we all have good days we'll have bad days but it's on those bad days when you've created those baby steps as healthy habits that's when you're going to support yourself so much better than if you hadn't already created those baby habits if for something i mean i people in my groups tend to find it hard to drink enough water what i do what i suggest is habit stack so every time they go to the toilet come out and then have a large glass of water and you find by you by associating going to the loo with having a large glass of water it makes it really easy to remember to drink so a lot of people forget to drink um and also just know that if you're I know with menopause a lot of ladies struggle with UTIs if you are getting urinary tract infections avoid teas and coffees because they're acidic and they can make that uh, inflammation worse so although there are people out there say yeah you tea and coffee can be part of your hydration mm, within reason you need to be drinking water as well the occasional tea and the occasional coffee is fine but water should be the main one. And if you don't like still water, sparkling water. If you don't like straight water, add herbs or fruit and spices to it. Um, I have an entire uh, ebook on healthy water recipes, really cleansing healthy water recipes. They're all natural. They're lovely. They're really refreshing. Um, if you'd like that, click the link um, in either my bio, if you're watching this on Instagram or below, if you're on YouTube, and I'll make sure to send that off to you. It's um, they're really, really lovely and they really zap up. They're almost like mocktails, but without obviously without the alcohol and very water dominant. So they're going to be really beneficial for you. Um, so, yeah, if also just if any of these baby steps that I've suggested with you today. I will keep you accountable. I'm happy to be your accountability partner. So what I suggest you do is when you're doing so whether it's drinking your water you might see on my instagram stories in the morning i i often shake my pint of water before i drink it often has apple cider vinegar in it or lemon juice whatever it is that you're doing whether you're going for a walk in nature whether you're reading something that feeds your mind that's going to help you create these healthy habits whether it's a plate full of vegetables or half a plate of vegetables or an apple with a big bite out of it. If you want me to help support you, just share it on your stories and tag me and I will be your accountability partner because I know the power of accountability. It makes the biggest, biggest difference. It made the biggest difference from, for me and it made the biggest difference from the people in my health and wellness group. So I hope these have been helpful. So remember, first and foremost, where why do you want to feel healthy not just the the scale why how do you want to feel and focus on that because that's a positive 
it doesn't re require, I mean, the way we feed doesn't require deprivation or restriction anyway. We just do not agree with that. We crowd out the bad with the good and we eat healthy, but plentiful healthy food. So what, what is your why? You know, why, why do you want to achieve what you want to achieve? Baby steps, just commit to one thing and then add on to that every week and then accountability. So I hope these tips have helped you. Remember to tag me in your stories if you want me to be your silent accountability partner. I'd love to do that. Um, and please, if you found this helpful, either share it with a friend, leave me a comment below if you found it helpful, or if you're watching this on uh, YouTube, hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss future Menopause Mondays. Thank you so much for your time. Hope you have a